hikers are probably wondering why is all this cut stuff sitting on the side of the trail um, and what's the point? There isn't a whole lot of very large open growth trees. Um, a lot of those trees are getting shaded out and they're dying and they're falling to the ground, um, which is why we came through and chemically and uh, mechanically thin this area. I know it looks like a mess and um, it's hard, it would be hard for us to get it out of here, but I mean it has a couple different benefits. One, the natural decaying process will hopefully recycle some nutrients back into the soil, and two, it's actually pretty good habitat for a lot of little critters that are, you know, inherently having to work with this open area that they have to come in and out of. You'll see it sitting on the side of the trail. Um, generally what we're doing is we're coming in and we're piecing it out. When I piece it out, I'm piecing it out because I'm trying to sit it on the ground. And over years upon years of repeated fire, eventually that's going to go away. Just understand that these trees that we're cutting down have been selected for a purpose. And when we cut them down, it's for a reason. We're trying to create oak regeneration. What we're doing here is um, we've identified this area that has a lot of old growth oaks, um, but a lot of hackberry and ironwood and elm. We basically do a operation called hack and squirt. Hack and squirt is where I'm gonna go around the tree, all the way around it, and I'm gonna hit it probably about four times, and I'm gonna squirt one squirt of garland into my hatchet mark. We use hack and squirt because it's effective, and we've learned from partners and from some research that it is probably the most effective way to slowly open up the forest floor. We'll start to see the leaves start to curl, and eventually they'll start to fall and the next year there will be a lot more sunlight in the forest floor.